Hello, this is Matt's Amazing Mazes, and I like to share with my subscribers and my viewers about the love of God. Yes, this is another Bible topic discussion, and um, and the question is, what does the love of God means? What does it mean for me? What does it mean for you? What does it mean for all of us? So, um, if you look at the right side of the maze of the heart, right there, the heart, um, it shows the scripture, 1 John chapter 5, verse 3. Right away, it tells you what the love of God means. For this is what, so First John chapter 5 verse 3 says, For this is what the love of God means, that we observe His commandments, and yet His commandments are not burdensome. However, the word burdensome means something um, that is um, troublesome or, or something that that is harsh or, or something that, that gives you um, um, pains of distress or, or something like that. But however, it says that his commandments are not burdensome. That means it's the opposite of burdensome. Burdensome. It's it's not a burden. That that means it's um. It's a blessing. And um. Since it's not a troublesome of um, of observing his commandments, that that means also that you should apply his commandments in your daily life and that's what the love of God means is to obey his commandments is to apply it is to observe it and um, there's more involved than just observing his commandments you must get to know your God as well and it says here on the left side of the heart of the maze, 1 John chapter 2, verse 3, it says, And by this we realize that we have come to know him, namely, if we continue observing his commandments. So when we observe his, co observe his commandments and, and observe his word, the Holy Bible, we, 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 we get to to come to know the only one true God. So, um, what is the true definition of what love is? I'm going to get my Bible here and we're going to try to define the true meaning of what love is, of what it means. So, um, I'm going to go to 1 Corinthians First Corinthians chapter 13 verses 4 through 7. So, this is what the true definition of what love means. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 4 says, Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous. Love, it does not brag, does not get puffed up. Verse 5, does not behave indecently does not look for its own interests, does not become provoked, it does not keep account of the injury. Verse 6, 
It does not rejoice over unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth. Verse 7, it bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Verse 8, love never fails. So that's the true definition of what love means. It does not get jealous. It does not get puffed up. does not brag. It does not behave undecently. Um, that's what love does not do. It does the opposite of, of those things. A, a positive things of what it does. Um, so... Love doesn't have negative traits of what the world, how the world view love is, you know. What what the world view love is, is not what love is. Uh, the Bible defined love as not these attributes of what, how the love pervades pervades or um true of what the love considers it to be so um so that so the um the start of the maze on the left upper corner side of the maze is is who is love and the in the right bottom corner of the maze, of the finish of the maze, says, God is love. So how do we know that God is love? Well, let's go to his inspired word, the Holy Bible, and let's read Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Second Timothy chapter three verse sixteen says, "All Scripture is inspired of God and beneficial, for teaching, for reproving, for setting things straight, for disciplining in righteousness, so that the man of God may be fully competent, completely equipped for every good work." So it says here in verse sixteen that all Scripture is inspired of God. Both the Hebrew scriptures and the Christian Greek scriptures, the Old Testament and the New Testament, all those scriptures are inspired of God. There is no subtracting or nor a adding to it. They're all inspired of God. All those scriptures. So um, since since all scriptures are inspired of God, we're going to go to 1 John chapter 4 and we're, and we're going to read verse 8. And this tell you who is love. So, so 1 John chapter 4 verse 8 tells us who is love. Whoever does not love has not come to know God because God is love. Yes, God is love. He He's the true source of what love is. He He's the God of love. So, um, since He's the God of love, he, there's certain standards and principles even He goes by, which governs His ways of what love is and how and how he handles it and um we're going and and he's not so harsh and, and so downhearted on the wicked on the wicked people actually he wants the wicked people to change their ways and he gives them time to change to see if they will change their ways their ways for the better good and that's based on Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 23. And I'm going to turn it to Ezekiel 
chapter 18. Verse 23. Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 23 says. This is what the, the true God is saying. Do I take any pleasure at all in the death of the wicked person? Declares the sovereign Lord Jehovah. Do I not prefer. Do, not, do I not prefer. That he turn away from his ways and keep living. So God does not even take pleasure in the death uh, in the death of a wicked person. How much more so if he doesn't take pleasure in the death of a wicked person. How much more so would he not take pleasure of, of um, having them be tormented. In a place of anguish and torment. You know. Actually. Um, Jesus Christ says. That he would not speak to the people. Unless if he speaks with them in illustrations only. And he actually Jesus talk about. Um, about the, the, the. About the, the fiery. Um, pits of hell but actually he wasn't talking to people in that sort of matter he wasn't talking about a literal fiery torment in hell of everlasting fire he was talking about it in a symbolic way remember symbolic means illustrations he was talking about well if as as if you take a piece of paper, crumbled up piece of paper, and throw it in the fire, what would happen to that crumbled up piece of paper? It would disintegrate. It would be annihilated. That that fire ain't going to. I mean that pa that piece of crink crinkled up piece of paper, is it going to um, remain forever in the in the fire, burning without being um reduced to ashes it's going to re be reduced to ashes and that's how the, the how the the wicked at this at the second death the coming of the second death would 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 be they they would they would experience having no conscious ha experiencing having no con having no conscious of nothing at all There'll be the there'll, there'll be no there'll be no conscience of nothing at all, which means that the thoughts will perish. That that means they will not experience their thoughts. I mean, there'll, there'll be nothing of they'll be conscious of nothing at all. That's what they would be. So um, that's that's <coughs> that's what the second death means. Eternal destruction. Not ha ha not experiencing no conscious of nothing at all. That's exactly what it means. Ha have no conscious of nothing at all forever. And what's the opposite of eternal life? Have no conscious of nothing at all. So um. So it, it's what it says in First John chapter three verse fifteen. It says, if you hate your brother, you are a murderer. And no murderer has eternal life remaining in him. No, remember what it says in that scripture? No murderer has eternal life remaining in him. If he has no eternal life, that means he's, not, he's conscious of nothing at all. Because what's the opposite of eternal life? having no eternal life and if you have no eternal life you're conscious of nothing at all forever so um I, that's what i wanted to share with you um god is the loving god he's not going to torment people or ha or, or 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 have a person totally separated 
from him for eternity not being among people or him because I don't believe God I, I personally believe that God do not believe in solitary confinement I don't think I believe that God do not believe in so solitary confinement forever I, I don't think he's that kind of loving I, I don't think he's that type of God who is loving that would do such a thing so um so I, I would like to to wish you guys a blessed day peace and happiness and I hope this is was food for thought and every single um Bible topical discussion video I do is is don't take my word for it um like it says in first john chapter 4 verse 1 do not believe every inspired statement but test the inspired inspired statement to see whether they originate with god for many false prophets have gone forth into the world i mean test the expired expressions test the spirits test the inspired in statements to see whether they originate with god but do not believe every every inspired expression. Do not believe every spirit, but test them. See if if they hold true. And and um and do your best research and, and pray to God, the the, tr the only one true God, for the know how and the understanding and the wisdom that you need for your grand search for the truth. So this is Matt's Amazing Mazes signing off. You have a wonderful day.